Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with state-of-the-art preventive medicine, heart attack and stroke prevention. Today we're going to talk about ACE inhibitors and ARBs. ACE inhibitors are a type of blood pressure medication. They were found to be extremely helpful. Not only did they actually decrease the blood pressure, but they decreased long-term uh, negative outcomes like cardiovascular events, heart attacks, strokes. They improve the survival of people with high blood pressure and diabetes and other risks for heart attack and stroke. So they did exactly what we wanted them to do. So why isn't everybody on them? Well, here's the thing. There are a couple of uh, significant side effects with ACE inhibitors. The first one is uh, unusual, not totally rare. Uh, it's called angioedema. Let's talk about these big words anyway. ACE inhibitor, it stands for angiotensin conversion enzyme inhibitor. Um, that's what the medication is. Angiotensin is one of those big scientific words that can sound confusing, but if you break it up, it's got the components of what it does in it. Angio meaning vessel, uh, tensin meaning to tense up. So angiotensin is a hormone that uh, our bodies make, especially as we get older, we tend to make a little bit more of it. And it raises the blood pressure by making the arteries more tense. ACE inhibitors inhibit that angiotensin, so or that angiotensin converting an en enzyme. So um, that causes a decrease in blood pressure. It also appears to cause a, something else, a decrease in cardiovascular inflammation. And if you'll review our, my other videos, you see that the major risk from heart, heart attack and stroke comes from a thing called cardiovascular inflammation, even more so than LDL or bad cholesterol. It's inflammation. So. The ACE inhibitors do appear to have a significant anti-inflammatory impact. That anti-inflammatory impact actually comes from uh, the mechanism, the same mechanism as lowering, lowering blood pressure by decreasing angiotensin. So these things are great. They uh, save people's lives. They decrease heart attack and stroke. Why don't? Why isn't everybody on? Well. <clears throat> We do try to put a lot of people on them, and a lot of people have side effects. In fact, between 5 and 30% of folks will have a side effect, a cough, a dry, chronic, recurring cough. This is a cough that can wake you up at night over and over again. It's a cough that doesn't, uh, it, it may last for three months or more. It's a, it's a cough that uh, gets far worse if you get a cold or congestion or happen to get allergies in the middle of this, uh, this period that you have the dry cough. So what do you do about it? Well, <clears throat> um, you can decrease the medication a little bit. That doesn't seem to help a whole lot. The most common thing to do is let's try and wait it out. I'm on uh, an ACE inhibitor, by the way, Ramapril. I waited it out, went through a couple of um, colds and uh, allergy periods, and it was miserable. Up all night, many nights with cough, or w getting woke up recurrently with cough. There was a, a thought at one time that you could give an iron supplement for it. There was some research in, back in 2001 which indicated that might be the solution here. Turned out not to be the case. So a lot of people end up just stopping the medication, and guess what? They take their chances with increased heart attack and stroke prevention. Uh, when you look at the types of medications that we have to decrease cardiovascular inflammation, there are two classes. One of them is the statins, and uh, we all know there are significant side effects and risks with statins, although not as much um, as the benefits. See one of my other videos for this. The other uh, class of drugs that decreases cardiovascular inflammation is the ACE inhibitors. So we don't really have a lot of other options. Now, <clears throat> the pharmaceutical industry recognizing this 
put a lot of research money into developing another kind of related medication that didn't have these side effects. Uh, they called them ARBs, angiotensin, so you're still working on that same hormone, but it was a receptor blocker instead of a converting enzyme inhibitor. The ARBs, or the angiotensin receptor blockers, do lower blood pressure just as well as uh, ACE inhibitors. They also don't have the problem with cough. There's yet another side effect, which I haven't mentioned for ACE inhibitors, and that is angioedema. That's r very unusual to the point of maybe even being rare, but it can be dangerous and can actually kill you. Angio, again, vessel, edema, meaning swelling. So <clears throat> angioedema can come from ACE inhibitors as well. Um, and again, ARBs don't have that. So the ARBs don't have uh, ACE, uh, they don't have the uh, cough, they don't have the problem with angioedema, and they lower the blood pressure. So why don't we switch everybody to ARBs? Well, there's been a major migration to ARBs, but here's the problem. When you do the research, ARBs lower the blood pressure, but they don't seem to have the impact in terms of decreased heart attack and stroke. Again, it gets back to the mechanism I mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, the ACE inhibitors do appear to decrease inflammation, probably uh, due to the same reason, decreasing the, uh, the angiotensin. But the ARBs don't seem to have that same impact. So <clears throat> it's, I think it was Rosanna Rosanadana or someone who said, look, it's always something. And that's the issue here. You've got ACE inhibitors, which are great for decreasing heart attack and stroke risk. And you've got ARBs. Uh, pick your poison.